Okay, so we are inside Silhouette and I'm gonna do a playback and show you how the footage looks like. It's a pretty straightforward shot and I was asked to create maps for these two characters. Maybe they are planning to do some changes in the background. The good thing is that I don't have to provide them mats like 100% precisely. I don't have to worry too much about this detail. There are a few details over here as well. But overall I have to aim at like 80% precision. Yeah, I can take a couple of days to finish this shot by using traditional rotoscopy as it's not that complicated. Maybe less than two days but obviously it's gonna take more than a day. But problem is that we don't have much time and we have to deliver this match in just a half day. With half day, I don't think anyone can finish this shot. Maybe you can, I'm not sure, but at least I can't. So that's where I can make use of all those beautiful AI tools in our work. By the way, if you guys are not learning any kind of AI tools or machine learning tools, try to learn because things are changing to be honest. So if you don't learn, the artists who are learning all these tools definitely gonna replace you. Cool. So in Silhouette 2024, they have introduced few machine learning tools. There is an interesting one, Matt ML, which I'm going to demo in this tutorial. There are a few other tools. I'm not going to explain those tools in this tutorial. Maybe later on for sure. Let's take Matt Assist and see what is that. I'm going to connect that into my plate. As soon as I connect the node, I can't see any result. This is not the right way to get a result using this node. So how does this work is very simple. We have to create at least a single frame of roto and plug that into matrices so that it can drive that data throughout the work range and uh, create the desired result. That means if you have mat for a particular subject just for one frame and you can plug that into matrices. In this case, if I have roto for these two characters, just one frame, I can plug that into matrices and generate mat throughout the work range. So for that, I'm going to take roto node connect that into oops connect that into my plate i'm gonna do roto for these two characters there we go i just did roto for these two characters very roughly you can see all these details are missing i have created a zigzag roto here not to cover all the details but to show how the plate looks like yep so roto is done now how to connect that into matrices here we have a data pipe i'm gonna connect that into my uh, roto nodes data pipe here and if i view on matrices ml we are not gonna see any mat here uh, if you see the properties out of this the first one we have a few options here input alpha and roto data port so what is input alpha suppose if your footage already have alpha embedded into it you can use input alpha and there are a few other methods as well which can make use of input alpha in this case i am using roto node the option i'm gonna choose is roto data port as soon as i selected that if you go into the alpha mode there is an alpha generated inside mat assist and the beauty is that if you go into some other frames we have mat throughout the work range if you don't believe just go into the last frame give some time to generate result for that frame there we go now let's go into the first frame and see how accurate the result is if you see we have pretty much roto for hair details and this single piece of clothes also is covered and if you go into mat assist, you can see it looks weird. The details are missing. So it's not exactly the same as the roto node outputs. Let's go into the last frame and see. So here we have lots of mat holes. This is not the result which we want. Obviously, we can spend more time to refine this result. If you watch tutorials of Ben from Boris FX, the technique he was using is that creating lots of keyframes for roto. That means we have to draw roto for maybe another couple of frames to get more decent results. I tried a few frames, but it was not what I needed. So I thought of trying some other method as well. So what if I can export this alpha map from Silhouette and take that into new and feed few frames of those data into copycat and then try to generate maths inside Nuke. I'm going to try that and see how the result looks like. This is all just my exploration. If you want to spend more time refining maths inside Silhouette, you can do that. I'm just giving you a few other ideas as well. That's all. The other thing is that I'm not going to explain those other properties maybe next time. So let's render my math. One more tip I can give you is that for me, it's always hard to check math in the default overlay mode. I find it easy when you invert the alpha. This is even better. This result is amazing, right? I never thought this is going to be possible when I started my career. <laughs> cool so let's output the mat and see you guys inside nuke okay so we are back inside nuke and uh, you can see we have the footage here and also we have the rendered mat i didn't render throughout the work range i just rendered few frames connected the mat render into a shuffle node and shuffled that into rgba and if you view the shuffle node you can see we have mats on frame number 200 and uh, i guess 213 227 and 241 and 253 so we have like one, two, three, four, 
five frames of mats rendered from silhouette which obviously got generated using mat assist so didn't spend much time maybe 15 20 minutes i guess you have already used copy get in your work if not i'm going to show you which are the nodes we need to create a ground truth usually we need a frame range node we have to type in one one connect a frame hold node into that we don't want frame holds for every single frames those particular frames which we generated the mat and these are the frame holds i'm going to connect everything into this one select one by one create a pen clip Usually this is the basic setup which we need for creating ground truth and on top of this we can work, we can use Rotopaint or any kind of operations to create a specific type of effect. In this case, I'm going to take Rotopaint. But before that, I have a custom Python script which I made for making this part a bit easier. So I'm going to delete all this stuff. I have the script inside my script editor right now. So this is a script and I'm going to select all this and the control enter. First, it will ask us number of frame hold nodes which we needed. So in my case, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, five. And here you can type the frame number uh, separated by a comma. And so in my case, I have already copied and I'm going to paste it here. So these are the frame numbers which I need to generate. Click on OK. Cool. It's pretty easy, right? You don't have to create individual frame holds. All these things are automatically done. AI and Python, pretty useful. Now copy and paste this same section here into the plate and if we compare both, we should get the same thing. So this is the mat which got generated using mat assist. You can see all those mat holes and all those uh, issues here. I'm gonna quickly fix those issues using Rotobin node. Cool. So for example, if we have a small piece of cloth or a rope kind of thing, which is hanging from her shirt, if you see our mat, it is not there. That I just took a Rotobin and added that separately so that, you know, I can feed the exact data which I need uh, into copycat. I've fixed a few other issues as well. I have filled holes here, uh, made it a bit more accurate and if you check my third frame same thing some similar fixes fourth frame fix some mat holes and uh, added few details here added few details here as well fix some mat holes yeah that's a pretty basic work maybe it took 15 minutes if i calculated the entire work time it's definitely less than an hour very efficient my ground truth is ready my input is ready so i'm gonna feed this data into a copycat and let's see i'm gonna take a copycat node and ground truth is the mat and input is the plate so inside here we can choose the directory where we want to save all our cat files epox is very important obviously there are many tutorials in internet where they explain all this stuff so basically epox is the number of times the data set will be trained again and again i kept it like around 56000 very random number usually i heard like epox around 30 to 50k is good for roto training rest of the things i kept this as default and i'm going to click on start training and let's see how the result looks like after training so the training is done and i have imported that and rendered that is a pre-melted result um, with a checkerboard as background and I want to show you how the result looks like. You can see the detail is pretty awesome. Even the edge quality is so good. There are a few issues here definitely which we can train more and fine tune. It's kind of okay but uh, still some refining might be needed. But the detail in a hair is awesome actually. It's, it's not running around all over the place. It's very stable. We have some issues around here. Um, you can see the detail of that small cloth in pretty decent shape right i'm really impressed about the quality this is just like one hour of work by me and two hours of training inside my machine which is a bit old but if you have like a new gpu it should be even quicker i'm gonna render this as mad and send it to compositor and see uh what's his feedback is but the initial plan was like half day of work with 80 percentage of precision in the quality but we just did one hour of work and uh, the result is good yeah obviously we can fine tune it more and we can try different ways of training but um, yeah with many effort this result looks very 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 promising so i hope this tutorial is pretty useful if yes please like and share this tutorial with your friends i'm gonna make more tutorials soon i'll see you